tonight or today we're going to talk about uh, statistics. Uh, chapter 6 in the textbook is uh, becoming acquainted with statistical concepts. Uh, we'll actually have two different parts to this presentation. Uh, part 1 is a little bit longer than uh, part 2 and our objectives for this lecture are first to describe and understand descriptive and inferential statistics to discuss how to analyze and interpret data using statistics, gain an understanding what statistics should be used in your study and or project, learn how to present tables, figures, and the results section. This kind of goes back to last week's uh, chapter um, on the methods chapter, but this is really going to be chapter four for the spring. And then we're going to discuss how to turn numbers into words. So let's start with a question. What are statistics? Um, one definition for statistics, it is the science of collecting, classifying, presenting, and interpreting numerical data. Now and whatever, if you're doing a study or a project, <coughs> excuse me, most of you will use numbers in your uh, study or project to represent something. We call those variables. We talked about that uh, a couple weeks ago about independent variables and dependent variables. So the variables will turn into numbers somehow. And we'll talk about numbers in a little bit. What statistics allows us to do is to test something, to measure something, and to evaluate individuals in some kind of logical manner. Um, we'll talk a little bit later in the lecture about testing a hypothesis. We have talked about the hypothesis, the null hypothesis, uh, last week. Allows us to measure something. You know, we're going to measure. Uh, a vertical jump, we measure that, and we get, get a number and we turn that number into something that's useful. Then after we test and measure that individual, we try to make an evaluation on did that person do well? Was their vertical jump a good jump? Or was it a bad jump? Not a good jump at all. So again, statistics allows us to take numbers and to describe trends about the people, the participants. We call this descriptive statistics. You guys have used this. Um, we would use batting average in baseball. Um, so that's just one example is, is descriptive statistics. We know somebody's batting 400. They are doing really well and if they're batting 100 they're not doing too well. That's just describing something about an individual. The other type of statistics is called, uh, or another thing we can do with the numbers with statistics is make inferences. You see I have that in quotes, uh, or decisions and or conclusions concerning the participants. Some uh, stats books call this inferential statistics. Our textbook uh, calls has two different categories, parametric and non-parametric statistics and we'll talk about those in the next lecture, the difference between the terminology. Really what we're going to do, and we're going to talk about this later in the lecture, is that we set up a research question, we have a hypothesis, and what we want to do is set up a study to test that hypothesis to see if it's true or not. We collect data, we do our experiment, whatever we're doing, we collect data, then we use the numbers. We're going to use a statistical test, which is a mathematical equation, to determine if there's a difference between people, the variables, and then if there is a difference, we want to say, yeah, there's a difference between a do, the two or three or four, whatever it might be, and then make conclusions that say, if since this group of individuals have um, change because of the result of our study, then we should be able to go back to 
the greater, larger group of people and say that this is particularly true for everybody else. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in part two of this lecture. So the whole idea here is that we can use stats to describe just trends of individuals, our participants, and we can also use those numbers to make big conclusions about uh, studies. You know, um, a, lot of the, a lot of times on TV you see uh, new studies coming out saying there's been a new breakthrough in medicine. And so that's what they're doing with the, the statistics. They're using statistics to make decisions or conclusions on the change that hopefully the medicine has done. Some other things about descriptive and, and uh, inferential statistics. Um, descriptive statistics, they describe attributes about data in terms of the MCT which stands for Measures of Central Tendency. Again, MCT stands for Measures of Central Tendency. And those three measures are mode, mean, and median. And I'm going to talk about those more in a, later in this lecture. Another thing that descriptive statistics measure or describe are measures of variability. We call that variance, standard deviation, and range. And again, I'll get into that uh, a little bit later in this lecture. Inferential statistics, well, again, I described this a little bit earlier. We attempt to draw conclusions or inferences about the population based on the data taken from the sample. And I'll talk more about that as we go along. First thing we need to know about numbers is there are different levels of numbers. That's measurement. So we have four levels of measurement. Again, these are numbers. Um, they're, the four are nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. This is not covered in a textbook, but this is kind of important. So I want to make sure we get this to, um, clear. Each level provides different level of accuracy when collecting, measuring, and evaluating the data. We can only perform certain statistical tests for each level of measurement. And again, a statistical test is the way that we just determine if our hypothesis is correct or not. And hopefully I'll come clear as we go along. So our first level, nominal. It, since it's the, on the lowest part, it's the least precise of the four different levels. <clears throat> With nominal data, we have numbers or letters that are assigned to differentiate or label attributes or properties from one another. So nominal equals naming. So the N with nominal equals naming. So we're na all we're doing here is naming the data. So each category of data is mutually exclusive. That means that there's no interaction between the two. Some examples of nominal data, jersey numbers. Uh, number 22 is no different than number 23. They're completely separate numbers. They have nothing to do with one another. Uh, 22 is not better than 23 on a jersey number. Gender, a lot of times in studies, gender will be labeled male equals 1, females equals 2. It really doesn't mean anything on the way it is. Color of eyes, we can give it a number. Blue equals, blue equals 1, green equals 2, brown equals 3, such and so forth and so on. Um, all we're giving is giving a number to a particular uh, variable or attribute of an individual. Um, nationality, again, same kind of thing. A lot of these things right here that we have put here, the jersey number, gender, so forth and so on. Uh, when we talked about delimitations on your s subjects or participants, these will be type of things when you are delimitating the subject pool. Um, this is how we identify them in the demographics um, for the subjects. The only thing we can do in nominal data is calculate what's called frequency. Um, Frequency is pretty straightforward. 
frequency is the number of occurrences or how often a score occurs. For example, this is not true for this class. There are eight males and eight females in this class. That's a frequency. Twelve people have blue eyes and three people um, have green eyes. There's, there were 717 hot and cords sold in Fresno last month. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's all I'm talking about. That's frequency. Pretty much everybody understands. That's pretty straightforward. Um, it's just how often something happens. What we, we, what we can't do with frequency is we cannot compare anything else with nominal data. We can't compare number 23 to number 32. Um, you know, I picked those two numbers for a reason. Um, but we really can't compare the numbers associated at all to them. Uh, we can't make the distinction between them. So nominal data is just naming the data. It's really not that accurate. It's really, we use it for just identifying characteristics of variables. Our next level of data is called ordinal. This is more precise than nominal because it has the property of order, hence the name ordinal. So again, the O in ordinal and order. We have some kind of order here. So now numbers are assigned to represent relative amounts of the quality or attribute being measured. Categories are mutually exclusive, exclusive again, but now they have some kind of logical order associated with them. Uh, we can differentiate between one object and another object, and we can specify the direction of that difference. This is greater than that. So let me give you some examples of ordinal data. Okay, Number of free throws made, number of sit-ups performed in one minute, or a grade on a test. So each one of those numbers we can say that one is greater than the other. You made 10 out of 10 is better than 9 out of 10 free throws. Number of sit-ups, so forth and so on. That's pretty straightforward. Joe is ranked number one with the highest GPA, then Kelly is ranked second, etc. so forth and so on. It's uh, important to note that ordinal data does not lend itself to meaningful statistical calculations beyond frequency, which we talked about, rank ordering, and range. Now, rank order is exactly what we, Joe is ranked number one with the highest GPA and Kelly is ranked number two. That's rank ordering. ordering. Range is the highest minus the lowest gives us a number, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But that's what range is. It's just the difference between the highest number and the lowest number. Our next level of data is called interval data. It's more precise than the nominal or ordinal. There's equal differences in the measurements that reflect equal differences in amount of characteristics being assigned. Now, in the ordinal data, there was not equal differences. We can have a 80% on a test, a 90%, a 92, so forth and so off. Right now, the interval data, everything is equal measurement between the numbers. And our key word here is can indicate differences. Uh, we use interval data quite a bit in research. Again, categories are mutually exclusive, have some kind of logical order, and they have equal differences in, in characteristic in value. So again, um, we have some kind of uh, standard here. Zero on an interval scale does not mean the absence of something. This is kind of critical. You know, if we look for to these examples of interval data, here's some examples: zero temperature. Oh, sorry, temperature, calendar time, achievement tests, IQ scores, attitudinal scales. Now, let me say something about this zero is zero degrees Celsius mean an absence of temperature? And the answer is no. Um, it's 
does not mean an absence of something in temperature. So zero does not mean an absence of something. Uh, I, I, all these test type uh, interval data, excuse me, up here, the temperature and so forth and so on. Um, there's a specific um, interval or a difference between each one of the different scales. And like it says there in a the little bullet, each difference between Fahrenheit temperature is equal to every other degree. One degree is the same as one degree to two degrees, the same as the 100 degree to 99 degrees. Now, what the nice thing about interval data, which we use most in our uh, research type things, is we can do more statistically with interval data. Now, what we can do is we can go compare the differences between groups. So, if I wanted to compare um, group A, which was uh, lifting 10 pounds three times a week, and group B was lifting uh, 15 pounds three times a week, and group C, which wasn't doing anything, you wanted to compare those three groups to see which uh, which group would gain more strength, we can use um, a test called T-test and ANOVA test, which I'll talk about next week. Well, we can compare those groups and come up with some kind of conclusion and make a decision back to our population. And then we can also determine if there's some kind of relationship, which we'll call correlations. Again, next week we'll talk about that between the variables. Is there a relationship between um, smoking and cancer? We'll talk about that a little bit later too. Um, we'll use a test called Pearson's test, just to give you a little foreshadowing what's going to be coming up in a week next week. So again, interval data allows us to do a lot more statistically. Most of the stuff that we're going to be doing in our studies and our projects, we're going to use interval data. Our last level of uh, uh, measurement or numbers is ratio data. This is the most precise, reliable, and useful of all levels of measurement. We have equal distance between points and have a known, fixed, and meaningful zero point. Zero is zero, means an absence of something. Categories are mutually exclusive, have a logical order, equal differences in characteristics imply equal differences in value, and have a true zero point. Really not many human behaviors are measured with uh, ratio data because we don't have meaningful zero points. But we do have some, and we use them a lot in our area. And so height, you have zero height, obviously. You have zero weight, zero length, zero volume, zero time. So those are the most common ones in, in our area. Again, the distance between each point of these scales are equal, and they do have a meaningful zero point. A person who is 100 pounds is half the weight of 200 pounds. Now the point I'm trying to make there is back in interval data, 50 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, doesn't matter which one, is not, or excuse me, let me try do it the other way. 100 degrees Fahrenheit is not twice as hot as 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we can't say that, but with ratio data we can because uh, the zero point. Again, with both these type of interval and ratio data, <clears throat> we can do the same kind of statistical test. Again, most of the time we're going to use interval data, and we'll make that determination as we go along with your research question um, and your hypothesis. <clears throat> now, if you're doing a project, you may, you still may, well, you probably will because I'm asking you to develop some kind of assessment tool to know if you've been successful and that will probably be a survey, and that will be interval data. So um, that's what uh, one of the reasons why we're going over the statistics is so you understand exactly what the numbers mean. <clears throat>